So today I'm going to take you into a new show of Maria Barrio at Praxis on West 20th Street here in Chelsea, Chelsea Gallery District of New York. And all the galleries actually on this street have seeming to be closing probably because of the high cost of rent and all the construction happening on this street can't help either. But this is a new location that's just opened of Praxis and um, I'm going to bring you into the Maria Berrio show titled In a Time of Drought at 501 West 20th Street. And I was really excited to come across this show of hers. I first saw her work at the Sharp Volentis Studio Exhibition in Brooklyn in 2016 and really responded to her work. And this is probably the biggest piece in the show. And this is one of the paintings that I saw, one of the pieces rather, that I saw at the Sharp Polentis Studio show. And, and these pieces are actually collages of lots of little pieces of paper, um, handmade origami paper, rice paper, that she's getting from Japan. And she actually FaceTimes with the people and they'll show her you know, the different paper options and she'll choose from, from those conversations which paper pieces to use. And what's interesting is that the work has a real sort of painterly, almost impressionistic type of quality to it um, being made from this construction of collaged paper put together. And some of the hand dyed paper even gives it almost like a painterly quality like brush strokes. And the only parts that are actually painted on are some of like the hands and the faces. And I'm really drawn to that contrast between the patterns, like the extreme amounts of pattern in the clothes and in the backgrounds with the pretty flatness of the white, white skin and, and then the linear aspect around the hands and the faces. And a lot of her pieces portray these really self-empowered, like grounded women just gazing directly at us. And I really like that quality in the work as well. I like the subject matter a lot. And a lot of her paintings started originally from inspiration drawn at the Natural History Museum here in New York. And any New Yorker will recognize some of these dioramas. And then from there, she'll work out an imagery that is really uniquely personal to her. And yeah, I really like the way these hand dyed pieces of paper um, give like a kind of like a light dappling painterly quality to the work. And the way the collaged aspect um, creates actually like a flatness to the picture plane, although there's accurate proportions and the creation of distance that way, the actual picture plane is really flat and that really attracts me. That's something that of course Clement Greenberg was really <coughs> a proponent of. And the figures are always in these really patterned clothing. And Maria is a Colombian artist living in New York now and it makes me wonder how some of the elements in her pieces relate to her Colombian background. Things like the patterning and the connection to nature. And she has a lot of paintings that depict these grounded, self-empowered women with wings or even broken wings, sometimes just one wing. And of course, women with wings brings to mind angels. 
And these women also seem very much of the earth. This is nice. That contrast between the sharp edges of the cut out collaged paper and the dyed rice paper. I think the collage effect really helps to enhance the silhouettes as well and give a really striking visual impression. Here's another piece of a girl with wings. This one is entitled The Nightingale 2. And yeah, the way she's playing with the shapes that she's creating with her rice paper is really painterly and really appealing. These organic shapes are something that, um, you know, a lot of painters would be doing by simplifying the shapes with paint. And then the flatness of the face against all the textured patterns in the clothing. And the patterns in the feathers here are made up of even still just small cut out pieces of rice paper intricately cut out. This is interesting. There's a little snake glued on to the wrist here. That's neat. This piece is called The Nightingale One. And this is one of the first pieces that I saw from the show. And I love this piece. I like the way she's orchestrating the um, the coloring of the trees and the ground and it's kind of creating this nice pattern that really frames the figure. It's got nice variety to it and again the use of the cut out paper really enhances that silhouette so that the silhouettes are just really strong, really striking and yeah I really was drawn to the dyed quality of these papers and the way that they're creating like a light dappling almost like an impressionist landscape sort of an effect and then contrasted with the sharpness of the patterning and the clothing and the sharp cut out edges of the wings really nice and the write-up talks about the fact that some of these pieces may also be dealing with her experience as an Im immigrant in New York and the sort of displacement that I know I feel having grown up in nature and now living in this total city sort of environment and it does make me think she's kind of like an angel but she seems a little displaced on earth Here's another piece that I really love. I love her use of animals and in the pieces. And I think her use of the cutout rice paper really helps to create that flatness to the picture plane and the extreme amount of pattern all over the whole thing as well. Even though the, the way she's constructing the shapes does have depth, the tree in the background, you know, background is smaller, the figures are proportional. But there's that nice flatness, also kind of a designy sort of element to the verticals of the trees in the background. And the eye is really drawn to the central figures there on the left with the brightness of their clothing. They just really stand out against all the greens and grays of the background. Hmm, there's another interesting patterning created um, 
I cut out, I don't know if it's a piece of a dragon or something, forming her wrist um, bracelets. And these um, papers in the horse here are actually images of actual hair um, giving almost a, I don't know, indexical quality to the hair. So the horses are made up of images of hair, like fur. Maybe it's even of actual horse. I'm not sure. And she is using tone to create a little depth. There's sort of a darker side plane to the horse's face here and, you know, little bits of dimension and form. But I like how she's managing to do that while still maintaining the overall flatness to that picture plane. We'll go around to the one that's in the window too. This is a um, painting that, this is the one that really drew me in, and it's titled In a Time of Drought, which is the name of the show as well. And I immediately recognized these mountain goats from the mountain goats at the Natural History Museum. Again, I think anyone who's been to that museum would. And we've got this figure laying on the ground she kind of blends into the rocks, although she also stands out with all the patterning and bright colors in her clothing. And a lot of her pieces have sort of references to, you know, various myths and narratives. This one kind of draws to mind the idea of sacrifice um, from some of the Bible stories. And the mountains in the background also have a real power to them. And there's, yeah, such a power to her, the females, you know, that she depicts and, and the landscape. And it's also interesting the way she's like playing that with the relationship with animals and, and nature. And so I really love a lot of the narratives that she's like working with, I'm personally really drawn to them. And the treatment of these pieces. Also, a lot of the figures have this really brightly colored, almost fluorescent nail polish, and I love fluorescence. Um, I'm not sure if she's using charcoal or oil stick to create the lines around the hands and the figures, but that linear quality is really nice too. So yeah, I think this is an amazing show and I'm so glad to have gotten to see it and glad to bring you here as well. Maria Barrio at Praxis in New York City.